This is your boy Swapo, and I just jump out the porch with Dirty Gov Bastard. I see so many that lost what you never but know how to flow. Good girl, watch me water my soul. I say, hold on, one man, keep them snakes out your bin. If you can't take it. All right. We got my boy Swapo jumping off the porch with us today. What's up with you? What's up with you? Thanks for having me, man. Thanks for having me. What's up? Been a long, I ain't seen it been a long time, but shit, I should have, I would have been, been ready to do this shit here. Long time coming. We got it done today, though. Mm -hmm. What's going on with your Swapo? How you feeling? So I'm feeling good, you know what I'm saying? Goddamn, good to be outside the side, my side of town. Other than that, shit, everything Gucci. Good spirits, everything good. We ready for the end of the year, ready to bring it in 2024, for sure. That's real. What would you say is the biggest lesson you learned in 2023 that you were applying in 2024? Biggest lesson I learned in 2023, shit, keep going. Keep, shit, don't let nothing stop you. Just, shit, pushing that motherfucker for real and standing on what you believe in. That's really what it is. If finding a loophole throughout all the other shit, then it'd be all right for real. Nah, for sure. 2023. What got you most excited about the new year, though? Shit, just ready for going, reaching a high level, shit. Goddamn, shining more light of where the hell I'm at. Goddamn, kicking shit, still doing it. Being at a high level, really what it is. Really popping shit. shit. Popping shit. Hell yeah, hell yeah. So how does it make you feel to see yourself moving and grooving, just chasing your dreams? Shit, moving and grooving. Everything coming through in full circle. Shit, uh, it feel good. You know what I'm saying? I know I, it's, it's, always a, it's always another step to go through, always another time to get, take it up another step. You ain't never really about to just be content. For real. That's really what it is. And kicking shit, popping shit, yeah, shit yeah. like that. How does it make you feel to know that you're doing all this off the aspiration of yourself? You're putting on yourself, you know what I mean? It's a gamble, it's a real risk, but you're taking it all the way through that just in spite of your dream. Uh, taking it all in, shit, I'm doing a good thing at that motherfucker, really. For real. At the same time, it's like shit, you gotta take the good with the bad, yeah. keep it going. Goddamn, that's really what it is. Keeping that bitch going, man, because if, if you don't believe in yourself, that shit ain't really, that shit really gonna slow you down. Just, just keep believing in yourself, for sure. That's all you can do. Popping shit. Real spill. Keeping <laughs> shit going, <laughs> shit like that. So how would you describe growing up in South Carolina's, man? Shit, growing up, growing up where I'm from, see, this is an area where everybody really know everybody. You know what I'm saying? What's the name of the city? Go ahead and put them on the map. Shit, I was in South Carolina, St. Stephen. You know what I'm saying? A little country town. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? One way through. Uh, then, then you got an area further than that. And then you got areas further than that. But everybody really, when you go out of town and when you go someplace, the boy be like, shit, where you from? Be like, you say it and they went ahead and you say it again. The boy be like, just be like Charleston. Yeah. That's basically what it is. Because everybody got a whole lot of accent in some way, for real, for real. So how would you describe your upbringing in that environment? What was, what's the vibes out like there? Shit, bunch of four-wheelers. You got everybody doing the four-wheelers and shit. Goddamn, uh, other than that, shit, it's just about every other place. Seeing shit going every other place, but shit really going on in the country, for real. Uh, goddamn, popping shit, shit. Popping shit, for real. <laughs> <laughs> I'm about to keep it in the mix. Popping shit, but yeah, yeah. Goddamn, everything really, everything. It's the same shit that going everywhere. It goes on right there too, but just like everybody know everybody. That's basically what it is. And then that's really it, for real, for real. For real, for real. How would you describe yourself as a child? Mm -hmm. Shit, as a child, getting in a bunch of bullshit. Goddamn, mom's been in the military, so. We really, I used to really used to be moving, you see what I'm saying? Mama always had, you know what I'm saying, she'd go to this place and go to that place, so it was really more so like shit. And I've been with my grandmama a lot, you know what I'm saying? So we've been raised by my granny for real, more so like goddamn, my mama slide, and when she come back, she ready to go, shit like that, so. Everything was Gucci growing up, for real, for real. Until you keep getting into bullshit, that's basically what it'd be, shit like that. For real. At what point would you say you knew that the streets 
was out there and they exist, you know what I mean? When you know it was some ugly outside your window. Shit. Shit, once you keep getting in the bullshit, it's like shit, you gon' damn that shit get real, that shit gonna get real. That shit gonna get real for real show. And then just tell me popping shit for real, for real. For sure. <laughs> That's what it is. So at what point would you say you jumped off the porch? Mm. Yeah, I ain't about to be checking this shit in no shit, but shit, I say goddamn. I've been getting in this shit since a little since a little kid, just being hard headed. Me and my little brother and shit, so mm, I say goddamn after finish school and shit, for real, for real, and niggas drink with you. And then you know shit, niggas gotta do what you gotta do. Bring shit in the full circle, for real, for real. And then shit. That's really been it, for real, for real. I keep saying. What would you say is the biggest lesson you've learned since jumping off the porch? Shit, the biggest thing learned since jumping off the porch is shit. You got goddamn stand ten toes on what you believe in, and goddamn don't let nobody change, don't let nobody throw you off or put you in a position you ain't really want to be in, for real. But if you're ready to goddamn jump into that shit, go ahead, do your thing. But you ain't even about to even just bullshit around. That's really what it is with that. That's real. What would you say is the biggest sacrifice you had to make while being in the streets? <sighs> biggest sacrifice, being in the streets. Just being hard-headed. Biggest sacrifice would be shit. Because I went to school and all the other shit to play ball and shit, so it was really like getting in trouble with that. Getting kicked out or being with the wrong crowd. Teachers used to tell us, ah, right, you gotta do this, be this, do that. But that shit really ain't, shit really ain't about, about nothing for real, for real. That's real. At what point would you say you knew it was time to turn a new leaf and get out the streets? Shit, after I graduated and goddamn had my little girl, cut out all the bullshit and goddamn. Really was that on that, for real. But How I much would you say fatherhood changed you? Shit, when you little, you used to get into shit, and then you would be getting into it with people, and then motherfuckers would be like, yeah, shit, goddamn, I had a child, that's not a third, but then until you really have one, you really ain't gonna really be in that. Know how to move or really listen to what the listen, or I really have something at home to come home to, shit like that. So that really makes you, you know what I'm saying, go and. Just stay out the way and get to some money for real. Still be popping shit though. Still be popping shit though, for sure. Yeah, uh, yeah. So, when would you say you started fucking with the music? See, I've been fucking with the music since I was like eight. Like my cousin, them boy used to have, we used to be in the crib. That's the same used to be with my granny, so we used to be in the crib and shit. Them boys used to be, had they had they had their rap shit going, so then I really started picking up on what they've been doing at like seven years old, and then they had the Hot Boys and they had all that. So that's when I really started like he started like teaching me like what's a ball, and then when them niggas used to dip, I used to goddamn go on the computer. My grandma had like the little big butt computer shit, mm -hmm. the, the desktop shit with mm -hmm. the big shit on it. She used to have them shit, and I used to go in there and record it, punch it in, and record it, and punch it in. And I used to, I put it on the CD when I was like eight years old. And I had like three songs. And I started taking it to the crib and listening to it. And that's when I was like, had a little knock for it. Then that's when I just started doing it. I used to freestyle back in the day when growing up in school. So people used to be like, shit, you probably need to fuck with that shit. And that's when I was like, all right, that's when I got in graduating. I was like, fuck it, I'm gonna go ahead and take it serious. And I had dropped some shit and nobody been fucking with it for real. That's so, hard. I was just like, shit, had I would have been did it when I was eight, shit, ain't no telling what I would have, ain't no telling what I would have goddamn been on for real, for real. Perfect timing, my boy, perfect timing. Yeah. So, at what point would you say you decide to take music serious full time with your life? See, that thought I walked across that stage, goddamn, got my degree, and I was like, fuck it. I'm gonna just go ahead and just jump straight in for it, cause the whole time of me and being in college, 
I said, man, cause being in school shit, goddamn, I had that motherfucker, I, I done turned my damn dorm into a studio. So I had like the bed flipped up, fucked around, had get, ran into a MacBook, uh, Apple MacBook, and I got damn, um, had that shit, and I had a mic. Shit, I been recording before class, after class. I had, I fuck around, stay to the crib, or stay in my dorm, and just keep doing music. So once I got damn started like going in that motherfucker a lot, I was like, yeah, I'm perfecting my shit at the same time. So. That's when I was like, all right, so when I walk across that motherfucker stage, I was like, shit, I'm gonna drop this bitch as I walk across that motherfucker. That's so it. I had that bitch mapped out. That's where my whole theme and everything come from. So, really, I just, that's, 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 that's when I started taking that motherfucker serious. And now I ain't never even dropped that. That's still in the vault. Damn, you still didn't even drop it? Hell no, I dropped it, but I was just on some shit like, Fuck it, I'm about to go ahead and just pitch that bitch out there like <laughs> yeah. shit, all right, I'm about to, you know, this is what I'm about to, for real, I'm about to go ahead and just see what the feedback be, but at the same, same time, I was doing it since I was eight, so I was like, mm -hmm. shit, I'm really about to damn just turn back up. That's real. That's really what it was, so this all was a whole, after I done, like, you can go on YouTube, back all the way on YouTube, I was got some shit, I just freestyling and shit, just kicking shit, prom night shit like that. Going hey, you talking about? So once you graduated and shit, where was your mindset now? Where was your focus? I was locked in on music. I fucked around and goddamn kept taking trips outside of, outside of my tired of town and going to the studio. Cause I started going to Charlotte and Audio Box. So once I started going there, then I started it then. I really just, I started before, before I went to Audio Box, I was going to this spot in Greensboro. Mm -hmm. And then I was pa passing Charlotte, not even knowing that. Not even knowing it was a studio, you know what I'm saying, another studio there. I was just so ready to go and get out of town and do the, do it. That's when I was like, shit, I right, bet I'm about to damn go ahead and lock in. That's real. Talk about linking up with fellow producers from the Carolinas, Nico. First class, Tay Global, how was it working with them boys? Shit, every time me and Nico and goddamn first class get get do some shit, I always, I always be I always be coming up with the vibes, man. That should be really about the vibes for real. Shout out my dog first, man. Hell yeah. That should be with the vibes. Tay shit. Tay goddamn had reached out. I reached out to him. We both crossed paths. Goddamn and he uh sent me some shit and once I did, once I did a couple of his shit, I sent it to Holiday, and me and DJ Holiday were locked in. That's real. Like hell yeah. How did you and DJ Holiday get acquainted? Shit, fucked around and goddamn bumped into a real one, and goddamn he locked me in with him and shit. Ever since me and him locked in, it all was consistent, and I kept coming through with that heat for sure. And shit, I take that trip, get on that road. Holiday locked in, he a real one for sure. Shout out to Holiday for sure. For sure. I seen you got a couple features with him on the Son of an Angel project. Talk about that project and how it came about. Shit, goddamn. Shit, Son of Angel came, I, I came up with that shit. I was like, this this tape right here would be the tape that I really like, really been in my bag with. Like, all the other tapes, I was doing my thing now, but at the same time, I was like, as a growing as an artist, I was like, shit, this tape right here would be more more of my sound, more, more so what I want to do. But I got a nice catalog though out there, for real. No, for sure. But with the holiday shit, when holiday got them sent me the first one back, it was shit, it was turned. That's all right. It was turned. Like that night I did it, the night he got it, he sent it back to me that same night. He sent it back to me that same night. Me and my dog bumped that shit the whole way back. Like a four hour drive, That's straight right. back. And I had that bitch on repeat. I ain't gonna lie to you. That was a wonderful feeling. Hell yeah. I'm already Me and my dog sat beside so he was like, hey, shit, boy, damn, you look terrible. Like, shit, yeah, hey, that shit was turned. Yeah, yeah. That was turned. How was it working with Zay Tobin? Shit, Zay, shit. That shit was turned too, because it was like, where I'm from, growing up, Zay Tobin, Gucci, Holiday, all them boys coming through, it's like, shit. Yeah, everybody was riding to that, getting money, goddamn, doing what they had to do. We, I come to school every day bumping some old Gucci, cause shit, they used to call me goddamn Goo Up back when I was hooping. So shit, it was, shit, I always came through bumping Gucci. So you know what I'm saying? So it was major work with Zay, cause that's all you have back yeah. in the day. 
Zane Gucci, Zane Gucci. So shit, that shit was turned too. That shit was lit. When I got that shit clear, that's, that shit was lit. That yeah, was yeah. for feeling. That was something you put on the wall in the hood at, the, at, at my granny house or something, because shit, that shit was turned for real. Because we always talked about that. Growing up and listening to Z, riding, that shit was turned for real. For sure. What do you want your impact to be in this music shit? What impact do you want to leave behind? What you want people to remember you from this shit? That nah, shit. See, my shit, I'm, it's like so much I'm doing, music is part of it, whatever, under the umbrella. So it's like, I'm just the one to do the music, you know what I'm saying, and goddamn put that shit together and being hands on with everything as far as like music, music shit wise. So it's like, it's always a vibe. Like I got something for everything you're going through. Everything you're going through, I got something for you, for sure. And shit, reaching higher heights, Working with, you know what I'm saying? Some some people that I really like to work with and shit, really that's I just be got I be having no vibes. But I got everything for everything though. But when you put my shit on a ride to it, it's them shit be smooth. Yes, yeah. People be saying I need to come up with some lyrics, but I be like, nah, you just gotta sit back and just ride. You sit back and ride, <laughs> yeah. you be right. That shit gonna come that you that shit gonna make sense, man. That shit gonna make sense. Nah, for, for sure. Real, for real. What is it that you want from a major label situation? Or do you even want a major label situation? How do you project your career? Like, where you see it? Shit. Man, I really, I really think you know, it's some shit, like, something big. But I really want to stay hands on with my work, my project, how I break everything down. You know what I'm saying? Uh, What else I what else, what else I would want to LA on? That boy got come through with that. That boy got make it make sense. Like make it make sense, you see what I'm saying? As long as I keep everything under my umbrella and move like how I move and want to just keep coming like how I'm coming and just do it how I do it feel. We will win. Everything makes sense. That's real. Everything makes sense. Besides music, what's some of the other things you want to work on? Shit. I got my clothing, you know what I'm saying? I'm trying to do some collabs. Uh, uh, what else I want to do? I got some people that, you know what I'm saying? It's people that can get in some acting. I can do some acting. I'm down to, you know, take it to a, take it to a whole other level. But at the same time, I know music is really what's going to get me, get me on where I need to be, get that bag, do what I really got to do and shit like that. For real. Straight like that? Yeah. Well, I'm really more laid back, man. I'm really more laid back, like, so. As long as I get to just keep, keep my creative process and keep how I'm doing what I'm doing, everything gonna be Gucci. That's real. Sure, everything gonna be Gucci. What does fatherhood mean to you? Shit, it mean a lot. Uh, just, to, just to have, you know what I'm saying, just to have that energy, like that whole, what you ask for. You know what I'm saying? To get that, that's really, that's really what it is. That, that means everything to me, for real. That's the extra thing that keep me going, like a whole to a whole other step that I ain't never even thought I could, thought I could reach for. Real. And that's my world. You know what I'm saying? I got it right here on my face too. So yeah, that's everything. That's what's going on too. That's a whole other thing. So I want my kids, kids, kids to be straight with this shit, for real, for real. That's real. So how do you break down your project? I really be breaking it down like really with stuff that really like mean and meaningful time like probably some of my mom's birthday, my birthday, not some my brother's birthday, something that I done did, shit like that, goddamn um it'd be it'd be days where I really got something going on. So I plan for it, you know what I'm saying? So I make sure I'm moving the right way and make sure when that day comes Everything that I want to do come in full circle. I just sit back and see the play unfold, see the artwork come out. No, nah, that's real. That's really what, why I really be down. Dropping, I ain't, I ain't the type of rapper or type of artist to really like drop, cause like, I really drop in like, if you think looking for me to drop something, I'll probably drop something right around them times. Shit like that. So like right now, I'm about to drop a project right now for soon, real soon. That's cool. So how would you describe your creative process when making music? Shit, like my creative process when I'm making music is like, 
it be so many things. It can be like, it can it can jump from different subjects. Like, long as I long as I got the right things with me in the studio, you know what I'm saying. When I start creating that vibe, I just go. What's three things you need while you in the studio? Shit, three things I need in the studio. Shit, I gotta have, I gotta have a lick on me. Gotta have a lick on me. Gotta have some pressure on me. Goddamn. Probably gotta have some snacks. Probably something to drink. I keep going on, but like the top three things I need be something to drink for sure. Cause I, when I be coming to vibes, that shit be getting crazy in there sometimes, for real. Something to drink. I'll probably have some exotic on me and I'll probably goddamn most so lightly have a little bit of drink on me. Or I might just come in that bitch with my, my drink already from something I bought from the crib. Cause when I come in there, I'm about to just go ahead and turn it up. Them boys know every time I come in, I just transform for real, for real. No, that's real. So where did your stage name Swapo come from? See, really, like, I just knew when, you, when you're doing when you doing the music, you gotta come up with something that really like, you gotta come up with a name, you know what I'm saying? So I came up with that under the umbrella of the whole Swap thing, but my dog Jazz, we grew up, my dog Jazz, my partner from uh, like elementary school, we grew up like drawing shit. He brought like the logo to life. For real, for real. I gave him what I wanted. I draw something close to it, and he hit it up. He definitely put the definitely did what he needed to do with that. Then once I got that shit, I just I be like shit. All right, boom. I got that, so I'm gonna break it down. I just came up with Swapo, for real, for real. Yeah, but yeah. coming up, I had like a bunch of other other little nicknames. So sometimes it'll be some people will call me like Swapo. I be like, man, y'all boy ain't got to call me that, bro. Oh, Swap B S G. Yeah, Swap BSG is like, like the brand. You see what I'm saying? It's like, what what I'm what I'm what I'm standing on, and like what I really got going on. And I made it up um, in school. Like shit, I was in. I had to go to class one day. Fucked around and goddamn was like, man, I ain't about to go to class. So I was just sitting there, bitch, like I'm gonna do something constructive. I'm gonna do something positive. And just come up with something. Cause I had a studio right there. So I came up with it. Told my homeboy. And shit, goddamn. Tell you while you was in college, right? Yeah, well, yeah, yeah. And then I tell my homeboy, and the boys like, shit, hey, that's what you gonna do to do it. And that's when I came up with that, and shit. And I was like, shit, I'm just gonna name myself Swapo. For sure. And I just went with that. That's hard. Yeah, yeah. I know you don't want to talk about the college shit too, 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 too much, but yeah, you got funny. you got to commend yourself, bro. You know what I'm saying? You was kicked out of school for like five, seven years. You know what I mean? You turned it all the way around, yeah, and you yeah. but you finished that bit. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, you I got proud damn. of that shit, gang. You gotta be proud of that shit. Hell yeah, that's 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 like that's another thing why I was like, shit. I made sure I did that for my dudes because yeah. like she used to always be hard on me about like, come on now, and I done did it, and shit. I I did it, and that's when my was like, god damn, boy. Used to stay getting in trouble. You turn around and graduate college and shit like that too. So that was like my biggest flex. Like, hell yeah. yeah. I can, so, I, so the next person I tell them, boy, you know what I'm saying? You got to believe in yourself. You really can't just try to follow the crowd or follow the next person you want to be like. You got to do what you want to do and you're going you gonna to win for yeah, sure. Spill. That's something that I'm heavy on. So my dogs be like, my boy, you got it. I need it. I said, nah, I'm going to just stick with what I got going on for real. Real spill. So, I keep them plaques at the crib, so when mom see it, she see it. Real she does see it, them plaques for real. How and does it make you feel to know that you got a solid support system like that? To this lit, you know what I'm saying? Definitely keep me going, cause you know, you have some days where you be like, you ain't wanna fuck with it, but then, like I say, it's like, yeah, at the end of the day, if you, gonna, if you gonna do it, you might as well do it. You know what I'm saying? You might gotta make it, which might sound crazy, you might gotta make it your first priority. Some people don't really want do that, cause with the music, it's like shit. You gotta, you gotta, you gotta be, you gotta be nice too. Now you just can't be goddamn just putting out a bunch of damn bullshit. Now. Right. You gotta be hard. You gotta be nice with it. Right. So shit, yeah. I really just be, I be coming up with them vibes. I'm telling you, everything I got hit. My fuck be like, oh, you need to come out with some lyrics. I be like, bro, nah. I'm gonna come out with the lyrics though. So like my new project, I'm gonna have everything, everything laid out. And the other ones, they coming on there too. So. When the new one coming? When the new one coming? Shit, I've been coming real soon. I'm, while I'm down here, I got a, I got a studio session tonight. You know what I'm saying? So the night I'm gonna go ahead and put dot my eyes and get everything together and put them together, and then we gonna go ahead and drop that. 
And then me and Holiday, we got a single coming off of that. So yeah, that's gonna be pretty big. What was what was the best experience or like best advice Holiday gave you while working with him? Like take advantage of every opportunity. Like people don't really get to be, you know, then with, with that type of caliber, like working with Zay and working with Drummer Boy. It's like people don't really get to work with that type of cali caliber and coming through like how you coming through, hands on with everything. Doing everything, motherfuckers, goddamn, you know, that really don't come around too much like that. So you really got to take advantage of every opportunity. Cause some motherfuckers will be like, man, I ain't even trying to even, I ain't even trying to even mess with it. But every time I done came out here, I had to fly, you know what I'm saying? Just to get there and make sure everything was intact. When I say I'm going to come, I'm going to come out there and turn up, for sure. Yeah, yeah. So that experience was great. He told me that take advantage of every opportunity. I wouldn't stamp you if I didn't think you, you know what I'm saying, like that, but take advantage of every opportunity. Then we, as soon as we, I took advantage of shit, we ended up on tour. We ended up doing a thing at his uh, bus stop. So everything was just full coming, circle through, after full, that. coming through full circle for sure. Yeah, yeah. So Swamp Over Man, we appreciate you jumping off the porch with us, coming in, locking in with us. You already know we gonna stay tuned to see what the future hold for you. Well, blessings and wishes, my brother. Hell yeah, appreciate that, bro. Seeing y'all, boy. Appreciate y'all, boy, for having me, man. Appreciate y'all, boy, for having me. Real spill. I'm just a million, tell off, you never know how to flow. Who grow up, you water my soul.